today I will talk about the pectoral region and the axilla, so I will start by the organization of the upper limb. Regarding the skeleton of the upper limb, the first part of the upper limb is the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle is formed of two bones, the clavicle anterior and the scapula posterior. Then the arm has only one bone, which is the humerus. The forearm has two bones, the radius is the lateral bone and the ulna is the medial bone. Then the skeleton of the hand is divided into three parts, carpal bones, metacarpal bones and the phalanges. The carpal bones are eight, arranged in two rows for each one. And then the metacarpal bones are five, one for each finger, and then the phalanges, three for each finger, except the thumb, which has only two. Then regarding the vessels, nerves, and the muscles of the upper limb. Okay, this is the first region, which is the arm, the forearm, and the hand. Each region contains muscles, the nerve supplying these muscles, and artery. Okay? The arm. This is the arm. It's divided into anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. The muscles. The anterior compartment contains the three muscles BBC. Biceps, brachialis, coracobrachialis. The posterior compartment contains only one muscle, which is the triceps. Regarding the nerves, the anterior compartment contains the musculocutaneous nerve, which supplies the BBC, the biceps, brachialis, and the coracobrachialis. The posterior compartment, which is the triceps, is supplied by the radial nerve, and the artery is the brachial artery. Then the forearm. <coughs> the muscles of the forearm are divided into anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. The anterior compartment contains flexors of the wrist and the flexors of the fingers. The posterior compartment contains extensors of the wrist and the extensors of the fingers. The nerves or the nerve supply, the anterior compartment is supplied by the median and ulnar nerves, the posterior compartment is supplied by the radial nerve, and the arteries, the radial artery and the ulnar artery. Regarding the hand, muscles, vessels and the nerves, the muscles, short muscles and long tendons coming from the forearm, the nerves, the continuation or the termination of the median, ulnar and radial nerves, and the arteries, palmar arches, palmar arches, superficial palmar arch, and deep palmar arch, which are the continuation of the radial and ulnar arteries. So start by the pectoral region. This is the pectoral region containing the three muscles and the three layers of fascia. So the pectoral region three muscles and the three layers of fascia. The three muscles, the anterior layer is the pectoralis major, the posterior layer formed of two muscles, pectoralis minor and the subclavius. The three layers of fascia, of course the first one which is deep to the skin, superficial fascia, then the deep fascia and the clavi pectoral fascia in this area, clavi pectoral fascia. The superficial fascia which is deep to the skin, it contains the mammary gland or the breast. Then the deep fascia, it covers the pectoralis major, and then clavi pectoral fascia, filling the space between pectoralis minor and the subclavius. Here is the clavi pectoral fascia. Start by the muscles. This is the pectoralis major muscle. Regarding the origin, it arises by two heads, clavicular head and the sternocostal head. The clavicular head arises from the front of the medial half of the clavicle. The sternocostal head arises from the sternum and the upper six or seven costal cartilages. Regarding the insertion, it is inserted into the lateral lip of the bicepital groove. It is supplied by two nerves, medial pectoral nerve and the lateral pectoral nerve. 
medial pectoral nerve from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, lateral pectoral nerve from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. Regarding the action, any muscle attached to the bicepital groove adducts and immediately rotates the arm, and if the muscle is coming from the front, like the pectoralis major, it flexes the shoulder joint. If it is coming from the back, it extends the shoulder joint. Therefore, the pectoralis major has three actions. The first one, abduction of the arm, medial rotation of the arm, and deflection of the arm. So, abduction, flexion, and the medial rotation. This is a pectoralis major muscle. This is a clavicular head arising from the clavicle. This is the sternocostal head arising from the sternum and the costal cartilages. It is inserted into lateral lip of the bicepital groove. It is supplied by medial pectoral and lateral pectoral nerves, and the action is abduction, flexion, and the medial rotation of the arm or shoulder joint. Regarding the landmarks, it, is, it has upper border and lower border. This is the upper border of pectoralis major. The upper border is separated from the deltoid by this groove, deltopectoral groove. This deltopectoral groove contains three structures, artery, vein, and lymph nodes. The artery is the deltoid branch of the cervicoacromial artery. The vein is the cephalic vein and the lymph nodes are infraclavicular lymph nodes. Lymph nodes below the clavicle. The lower border of the pectoral is major. It forms, the, this is the lower border, it forms the anterior axillary fold. Regarding the deep muscles, pectoralis minor and the subclavius. Regarding the pectoralis minor, origin, it takes origin from the third, fourth, and fifth rib. It is inserted into coracoid process. It is supplied by the medial pectoral nerve. And regarding the action, it depresses depression of the shoulder, of the shoulder, or depression of the scapula. Okay, or downward rotation of the scapula plus protraction of the scapula. Protraction is forward movement of the scapula, or forward movement of the shoulder, okay? So the action of the pectoralis minor, depression of the scapula, okay? And the protraction or forward movement of the scapula. Regarding the subclavius, it takes origin from the first rib, it is inserted into the clavicle, it is supplied by the nerve to the subclavius from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, and the action of the subclavius fixation of the clavicle during the movement of the shoulder joint. Then the clavipectoral fascia. This is the clavipectoral fascia. Location. It is located between subclavius and the pectoralis minor. Okay? Between subclavius and the pectoralis minor. This is the clavipectoral fascia. Superiorly, it is splits into two layers which is around the subclavius. Inferiorly, it is splits to surround the pectoralis minor and then form the suspensory ligament of the axilla, which is attached to the axillary fascia. Okay, so this is the clavipectoral fascia. It surrounds the subclavius. It surrounds the pectoralis minor. It forms the suspensory ligament of the axilla. It is also called costocoracoid membrane. Why it is called the costocoracoid membrane? Because it is attached medially to the first costal cartilage, it is attached laterally to the coracoid process. This clavipectoral fascia is pierced by four structures, artery, vein, nerve, and the lymphatics. The artery is the sarcoacromial artery. The vein is the cephalic vein. The nerve is the lateral pectoral nerve, and then lymphatics. So the clavipectoral fascia between subclavius and the pectoralis minor, it is pierced by four structures, sarcoacromial artery, cephalic vein, lateral pectoral nerve, and lymphatics. <laughs>
about the axilla or the arm pit. This is the arm pit or the axilla. This is the axilla, it's pyramidal in shape. Pyramidal in shape, it has apex, base, and four walls, anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral. So we'll talk about the boundaries and the contents. The boundaries, the apex, this is the apex of the axilla, this is the apex of the axilla, then the base, which is the skin, and then four walls. The four walls, anterior wall, posterior wall, medial wall, and the lateral wall. Okay? Anterior, posterior, medial, and the lateral. Apex and the base. Start by the apex of the axilla. This is the apex of the axilla. It's called the cervical axillary canal. Why it's called the cervical axillary canal? Because it connects the neck with the axilla. What are the boundaries of the cervical axillary canal? Anteriorly, it is the middle third of the clavicle. Posteriorly, it is the upper border of the scapula, and immediately, it is the outer border of the first rib. So, anteriorly, middle third of the clavicle. Posteriorly, upper border of the scapula. Medially, it is the outer border of the first rib. Therefore, the axel begins at the outer border of the first rib. This is the cervical axillary canal, okay? Bounded anteriorly by the clavicle, posteriorly by the upper border of the scapula, and immediately by the first rib. The importance of the cervical axillary canal, it transmits vessels and nerves from the neck to the axilla. Regarding the walls of the axilla, again, this is pyramidal, apex, base, and the four walls, anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral. Regarding the anterior wall of the axilla, it is formed of three muscles. The three muscles are the anterior layer is the pectoralis major, the posterior layer, pectoralis minor, subclavius, and the clavipectoral fascia. So the anterior wall of the axilla, three muscles, and the clavipectoral fascia. The three muscles, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, subclavius, and in between here, clavipectoral fascia. Let us see the anterior wall, which is formed of three muscles. The first layer, or the anterior layer, is the pectoralis major. This is the pectoralis major, and this is the deltopectoral groove. Let us remove the pectoralis major to see the other two muscles. The deep muscle, this is the subclavius, and from the third, fourth, and fifth ribs, pectoralis minor, and in between, clavipectoral fascia. So the anterior wall, three muscles, and the clavipectoral fascia. The three muscles, pectoralis major anterior, pectoralis minor, and subclavius posterior, and the clavipectoral fascia in between. Let us remove these two muscles to see the posterior wall. The posterior wall of the axilla is one of the three muscles. The three muscles are subscapularis above, and the teres major, and the latissimus dorsi below. So the anterior wall is formed of three muscles, the posterior wall is also formed of three muscles. The three muscles formed with the anterior wall, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, subclavius. The, three, the posterior wall is formed of three muscles, subscapularis, teres major, latissimus dorsi. This is the posterior wall, formed of three muscles, Subscapularis, teres major, latissimus dorsi. This is the medial wall formed of the ribs and the intercostal muscles and the serratus anterior. So the medial wall formed of serratus anterior, ribs and the intercostal muscles. The lateral wall is formed of three muscles, bicepital groove of the humerus and the three muscles, long tendon of biceps, short tendon of biceps, and the coracobrachialis. So remember, the anterior wall is formed of three muscles. The posterior wall is also formed of serial muscles, and the lateral wall is also formed of serial muscles, long head of biceps, short head of biceps, and the coraco brachialis. We have what is called axillary folds. Axillary folds, anterior and posterior. The anterior fold of the axilla is formed by the lower border of pectoralis major. The posterior fold of the axilla is formed by the lower border of teres major and the latissimus dorsi. The posterior fold is lower than the anterior fold, therefore the lower limit of the axilla is the posterior fold, is the lower border of teres major and latissimus dorsi. Again, this is the axilla, and this is the axillary fat, this is the anterior wall, posterior wall, apex and the base. So the apex of the axilla, 
is the cervical axillary canal. The base of the axilla is the skin and the axillary fascia. This is the axillary fascia. Anterior wall of the axilla, three muscles and the clave pectoral fascia. The three muscles, pectoralis major anterior, pectoralis minor behind, subclavius also behind. And here, number three, is the clave pectoral fascia. So this is the anterior wall of the axilla. The posterior wall of the axilla, three muscles, subscapularis, teres major, let us master sigh. And this is the medial wall of the axilla, formed of serratus anterior, ribs and intercostal muscles. And the number four is the lateral wall of the axilla, formed of serratus muscles, long head of biceps, long head of uh, short head of biceps, and the corapo brachialis. Again, this is the axilla, anterior wall, posterior wall, medial wall, and the lateral wall. The anterior wall is formed of serratus muscles, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and the subclavius. And in between here, clavi pectoral fascia. The posterior wall is formed of serratus muscles, subscapularis, teres major, latus dorsi. This is the medial wall. It is formed of serratus anterior, ribs, and intercostal muscles. This is the lateral wall, formed of bicepital groove and the serratus muscles. Long head of biceps, short head of biceps, and the coraco brachialis. And finally, the contents of the axilla. What are the contents of the axilla? Number one, axillary vessels. What are the axillary vessels? Axillary artery and axillary vein. Of course, axillary artery and its branches, axillary vein and its tributaries, and the nerves. This is the brachial plexus and the intercostobrachial nerve. What is the intercostobrachial nerve? It is the lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve. And then axillary lymph nodes. We'll describe them in a separate lecture. Axillary lymph nodes divided into five groups. And then this part of the breast. It's called the axillary tail of the breast and the axillary fat. So what are the contents of the axilla? Vessels, nerves, lymph nodes, axillary tail of the breast, and the fat. Axillary vessels, axillary artery and axillary vein, nerves, brachial plexus, and the intercostal brachial nerve, axillary lymph nodes divided into five groups, and axillary tail.